So according to the information, OpenAI is plotting to charge $20,000 per month for PhD level agents. That's right, $20,000. And it's not just PhD level agents they're working on. They have other more affordable agents they plan on releasing this year as well. In this video, we'll break down everything we know so far and explore whether such a steep price tag can truly be justified, especially as open source AI continues to advance at an unprecedented pace. So here are the main takeaways of the information article organized by TechCrunch. They state, the publication reports that OpenAI intends to launch several agent products tailored for different applications, including sorting and ranking sales leads and software engineering. One, a high income knowledge worker agent will reportedly be priced at $2,000 a month. Another, a software developer agent is said to cost $10,000 a month. And OpenAI's most expensive rumored agent, priced at the aforementioned $20,000 per month tier, will be aimed at supporting PhD level research, according to the information. So we have a high income knowledge worker agent, reportedly priced at $2,000 per month. This is, I'm guessing, the agent that can sort and rank sales leads, and probably do a bunch of other relatively simple white collar tasks. Then we have a software developer agent, said to cost $10,000 per month. And finally, a $20,000 per month PhD level research agent. You can think of this as OpenAI's already released deep research agent that can browse the web and conduct research autonomously, but on steroids. Now, I know we're all thinking the same thing. Who the hell is going to buy this? I mean, it's obvious these aren't meant for regular consumers, but rather for companies willing to invest in AI-driven productivity. The question is then, are they worth it? Will these agents actually be more productive than human employees, and by how much? Can they fully replace certain job roles, or will they only handle specific tasks? And what about hallucinations? How often will they make mistakes, and how costly will those be? While we don't have definitive answers yet, what we do know is that these price points reflect the value OpenAI believes their AI agents can deliver. Whether that value holds up in practice remains to be seen. Talking about the software developer agent for a second though, the one they have priced at $2,000 per month, which is definitely a lot, but nowhere close to the average human software engineer's salary. It seems like this agent might be the real deal. Just look at this recent clip of OpenAI CEO Sam Altman talking about how quickly the reasoning models have been progressing at coding. Check this out. The progress over the, the recent scale is quite amazing. Our, our very first reasoning model um, was like a top one millionth competitive programmer in the world. People thought that was very impressive. It's like, wow, an AI, it's you know, the millionth best people that do this, that's pretty good. Um, we then had a model that got to like a uh, top 10,000. Uh, 03, which we talked about publicly in December, is the 175th best program competitive programmer in the world. I think our internal benchmark is now around 50, and maybe we'll hit number one by the end of this year. So that's like an amazing rate of scale for more compute in this new paradigm, and we don't see any signs of that stopping. So while the competitive programming benchmark he's referring to in this video likely isn't the best representation of real world high level software engineering tasks, it's clear that the progress being made is unprecedented. We've already seen the first true software engineering agent with Anthropic's recent release of Claude Code alongside Claude 3.7 Sonnet. If you haven't heard about this yet, I highly recommend looking into it, especially if you're a software developer, because it's actually a lot more capable than people think. I also made an entire video covering it along with the Claude 3.7 sonnet model, and I'll pop that up on screen for anyone interested. But the point is, these agents are already here, and they're already decent. So while these prices are undeniably high, I can't say for sure that they won't be worth it, at least not yet. Now, here's the issue for OpenAI though. Let's say these agents do end up delivering enough value for their cost. What's to stop another company like DeepSeek from releasing an open source, similarly performing agent at a fraction of the price? I mean, they've already done exactly that with DeepSeek R1, which outperformed OpenAI's O1 model for much cheaper. And since it's open source, anyone could download it and modify it as they please. Even a few days ago, I made a video covering this as well, but we had Alibaba's release of QWQ32B. This is a 32 billion parameter reasoning model that is on par with, if not outperforming DeepSeek R1, a 671 billion parameter model. 
In the span of only a few months, the cost of developing and running state-of-the-art models has fallen by multiple factors of 10. So why would a company pay OpenAI $2,000 per month for a software developer agent when they know that if they just wait a few months, there might be a similar option on the market for hundreds of times cheaper? This is why OpenAI is in a bit of trouble, as Gary Marcus points out. Now, Gary Marcus is kind of an OpenAI hater. I mean, he's generally very skeptical about AI progress, but every time OpenAI fails somehow, whether it be their research didn't go as planned, or their model release was underwhelming, you will see him on X acting like it's the end of the world. But in this post, I think he brings up some very valid points. He starts off by saying, OpenAI is in serious trouble. They still have the brand name, a lot of data, and tons of mostly unpaid users, but GPT 4.5 is hugely expensive. Even so, it offers no decisive advantage over competitors, zero moat. Now, this part I agree with. I mean, GPT 4.5 was definitely underwhelming. And as we just saw, there's open source models popping up left and right with similar performance to their best available models. He also mentions that scaling hasn't gotten them to AGI. I would add a yet to the end of that. And that the GPT-5 project was a failure. There is already starting to be a is that all they've got reaction. So this is an interesting one, because technically GPT-4.5 was supposed to be GPT-5, but OpenAI decided to call it GPT-4.5 and make it the last non-chain of thought model. I've talked about this many times before, but OpenAI plans to unify both the GPT series and the O series to create one model that just handles everything. Their first example of this hybrid reasoning model will be called GPT-5. They're doing this because they're clearly starting to see diminishing returns with the traditional pre-training scaling law. And the only way to make their models significantly better now is by scaling up test time compute, allowing the models to think for longer and actually reason. So you can't really say GPT-5 was a failure. I mean, it's not even out yet. But you can definitely say that the pre-training scaling law is starting to hit its limit. Now, he mentions a couple of other reasons why OpenAI is in trouble. DeepSeek led to a price war that cuts potential profits. They're likely still losing money on every prompt. Many, many top people have left and started their own competing companies. Microsoft is no longer fully supporting them, which I wouldn't say is necessarily a bad thing. And basically, whatever lead they had two years ago has been squandered. So it's really Really not looking good for OpenAI. I think their biggest potential threat right now is the incredible open source models coming out of China, which doesn't seem to be going away anytime soon. I simply don't see how OpenAI can be profitable anytime soon when they are constantly being undercut. I mean, they're already feeling the effects of these open source models. A recent example of this is Figure CEO Brett Adcock deciding to end his collaboration agreement with OpenAI. This agreement initially meant that Figure's humanoid robots would be powered by OpenAI's Frontier LLMs, but after achieving a major internal breakthrough, Figure decided to part ways. This major breakthrough was an AI system called Helix, which he developed in-house using open source models. Like, you know, um, trajectories uh, to, to go and grab something. Right. Um, and that, that, that doesn't sit like in the LM. The LM has no idea what that looks like. There's no right. robot data in there. Um, so, um, yeah, we basically train, we use like, we use open source models today, uh, but with uh, our own models internally and own data collection we do internally on robot and we basically build like basically like the foundation models yourself um, ourself huh. and we've been doing that almost exclusive like basically ourselves for a year um, and um, we think we're the best in the world at doing this on robotics I don't think there's anybody who's demonstrated better AI learning on robots than we put up publicly and that's because of the proprietary data you're collecting the vertical integration we do all the way from the actual hardware layer all the way into the AI neural network inference is all customized. Like we basically are designing boards and a hardware and actuators to, to better serve our neural nets. Right. So companies are already starting to realize that with open source AI, they can create even more customized models for their specific use cases at a fraction of the cost. Now, even though OpenAI is losing its lead, one area where they still hold a major advantage over most of their competition is infrastructure. With Project Stargate, they've secured $500 billion to build out AI infrastructure in the United States over the next four years. The scale of investment is something that very few companies, open source or not, can compete with. While open models are rapidly catching up in capability, OpenAI is betting that controlling the backbone of AI computing itself will be what keeps them dominant in the long run. But will that be enough? With companies like Figure proving that open source AI can be just as effective and far more cost efficient, OpenAI might be running out of time before their moat disappears entirely. And at the end of the day, the real race isn't just about better AI agents. It's about who gets to artificial super intelligence first. Open source models might be closing the gap, but OpenAI still has 
has the resources, the data, and the infrastructure to make that leap before anyone else. The question is, will they get there before someone else does? So let me know what you guys think. Does OpenAI still have the edge or is the open source wave too powerful? Drop your thoughts below. And if you enjoyed this breakdown, don't forget to like, subscribe, and check out my other videos for more AI updates.